Hi, my name is Allison, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to operate the Tormach PCNC 440. This machine is the smallest CNC milling machines we have here in the space, and it's the easiest to use. Before we go into how to operate this machine, first let's talk about what a CNC milling machine is and how it works. CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control, which means that the movement of the machine is controlled and programmed by a computer. A milling machine uses subtractive manufacturing, which includes a spinning cutting tool, like a drill or end mill, that removes material to create a part. A CNC mill can create 3D designs using software that calculates the movement of the machine. CNC machining follows these six basic steps. Booting up the machine, loading your stock or material into the machine, setting up work offsets, setting up tool offsets, running a program, and finally shutting down and cleaning up the machine. Using these exact same six steps, CNC's can create a variety of parts from simple things like desk trinkets all the way to complicated multi-operation precision parts for aerospace or automotive. The Tormo PCNC 440 is a three-axis machine, meaning it can move along the X, Y, and Z axes simultaneously. The table that holds the part in place moves along the X and Y axes, and the spindle moves up and down along the Z. The home position of the Tormach is a physical location all the way at the bottom right where the machine can re-sense where the table is. Although the Tormach is a CNC mill that is capable of producing intricate parts, there are limitations to this machine. The Tormach is a low-powered mill that has a three-quarter horsepower spindle motor. This means that it is not strong enough to cut through tough materials such as metals. Thus, we limit this machine to only cutting wood and plastic. If you do wish to cut through metal, you must train on the larger CNC mills we have here in the space. The Tormach is the smallest CNC mill we have here in the space, and therefore it is not a production machine, and you cannot produce multiple parts in one sitting. However, it is a great option for small prototypes for your next project. Now that we know what a CNC milling machine is, let's take a look at the components that make up the Tormach. The most important component to the Tormach is this big red button on the operator box, called the emergency stop, or e-stop for short. When pressed, the e-stop will terminate all motion within the Tormach. Pressing the e-stop has a list of reset procedures, so use it for emergencies only. Above the e-stop is the start button that powers on the machine and notifies the computer that it is ready to operate. Above the operator box, there is the jog handle, which will be used to manually move the machine. This jog handle can both jog and step in all axes of motion. To jog, you will first select on the axis you wish to move in and turn the shuttle ring either in the positive or negative direction. To step, you will need to select an increment option on the controller. Then spin the inner ring where each step is a physical step in the selected size. In front of the Tormach, there are safety doors there to protect the user from the machine. These doors must remain closed while a program is running. The machine will not operate with the doors open. Inside, there is a table which holds the fixture in place. Fixtures hold the vise and workpiece while the part is being cut. The vise we have in our Tormox are the standard stationary jaw vise, meaning only one of the jaws move when securing in your stock. Above the table is the spindle and the spindle doors. The spindle holds the collet and tool in place and rotates the tool for cutting. To the right of the Tormox, we have a monitor here, which is what we call the controller. The controller gives the machinist the ability to operate the Tormach. It is the main control system that does most of the computation to run the machine. You will use the controller to boot up and operate this machine. Below the Tormach, there is a cabinet located underneath which holds the computer and other necessary tools. In here, there are parallels, extra collets, tool bits, height gauges, etc. You may need to use some of these tools when setting up the Tormach. Next, let's go over the tools you can use on this machine. We have seven standardized tools 
that we have set into the machine already. These tools have been prepared to be used for cutting and cannot be changed. If you have a tool that is not part of the standard tools we have here, ask an MST for assistance in setting up your tool. The seven tools already set with each machine consist of some end mills and drills. An end mill is a tool that cuts away material using the side of the tool with its flutes. Flutes are the sharp swirls you see around the shank of the tool. Drills are used to make holes in a part and cut away material with the pointed end of the tool. The seven standard tools we have are shown here. Tool one is an eighth inch drill. Tool two is a quarter inch drill. Tool three is a 16th inch flat end mill. This is the smallest flat end mill we have set up and it is great to use for small defined details. Tool four is an eighth inch flat end mill. Tool five is a quarter inch flat end mill. Tool six is an eighth inch ball end mill. This tool is ideal for smoothing and finishing apart due to its rounded end. And lastly, tool seven is the half inch flat end mill, generally used for hogging away a large amount of material. These tools are also available on the tool library of Mastercam, pre-configured in our makerspace. Now that we covered some of the main components of the Tormach, Let's go over the safety precautions when handling this machine. As you should know, to enter the industrial makerspace, you must wear the proper PPE. This means whether you are running a program on the Tormach or not, all your PPE must remain on, including your safety glasses. One of the most hazardous aspects of this machine is the spindle. Since the spindle houses sharp tools and can spin up to 10,000 RPM, there could be potential fires that could start, parts or material being thrown, or sharp tools that could harm the operator. You should never stick your arm, hand, or any body part near a moving spindle. If the doors are open while running a program, all movement within the machine will stop. This is a safety feature embedded into the Tormach that can help prevent injury. If you experience minor injuries, please find the nearest MST to locate the first aid kit. For any major injuries, please call 911 and notify the nearest MST. Some injuries could occur from tool handling. When you are handling the tools, be sure to hold it by the chuck and not by the flutes. The flutes are the sharp part of a tool that is used to cut through the stock. Lastly, while cutting apart, there will be many chips of material that will develop. Chips are pieces of material that are cut off from the stock through the milling process. To clear up some of the chips inside, you may need to use compressed air to inspect your part. When using compressed air to blow away chips, never point it in the direction of another person or yourself, as this could damage eardrums or blow particles into someone's eyes or mouth. You also want to refrain from pointing the air pressure up into the spindle. Chips could get blown in and can damage the spindle. Now that we are familiarized with the Tormach, let's go over the first step to machining your part. As I mentioned before, there are six basic steps in order to become a machinist. First, I'll show you how to boot up your mill. You want to start by turning the main power switch to on. This switch is located on the side of the machine. It is padlocked and requires a key that you can check out from the tool room. Next, release the e-stop by twisting it clockwise. Then, press the green button above. The controller should already be on, but if the screen is off, you can turn on the controller by going under the cabinet and pressing and holding the power button on the computer. Once you see this screen, you will start by clicking the reset button and then reference the X, Y, and Z axes by clicking the ref buttons here. Please wait until all axes stop moving and the green light is shown here. Do not attempt to jog the machine prior or during this operation. Now that we booted up the mill, let's go over the different options shown on the controller. <laughs> the top portion is the notebook. Here you can do a variety of tasks depending on the tab that is active. There are seven different tabs we can access, but the main ones you will use are the main, file, 
offsets, and status tabs. The lower left portion of the screen is known as the program control group. Underneath the tabs to the left, there is a button that says cycle start. This button starts running a program after it is uploaded onto the notebook. If your program has a tool change or a pause in the code, you will press this button to continue. The next button is feed hold. When activated while a program is running, it will stop all motion of the machine and the spindle will remain spinning, acting like a pause button. If you notice something odd happen while running your program, press the feed hold button to save the tool and your part from potential damage. It is important to note that the feed hold button should be the primary button used when stopping the machine. The next button is stop. When pressed, it will stop all motion of the machine, including the spindle, and the G-code restarts to the beginning. The coolant button turns on the coolant. The coolant is used to cool the tool and workpiece while a program is running. The last button in this section is the reset button. This button can bring the mill out of an e-stop condition, clear alarm messages, and rewind the G-code program. The lower half of the program control group consists of the overrides. The feed rate of the tool is the velocity in which the cutter is fed into the workpiece. The spindle override is modifying the speed of the spindle. This is measured in RPM, or revolutions per minute. Be careful when overriding the spindle speed. Doing drastic changes can lead to tool damage. The last option is max VEL, which stands for maximum velocity. This slide bar controls the speed in which the mill runs through the program. In the center, we have the position status group. In this section, the left keys are there to zero out the X, Y, and Z axes. We will not be using the A-axis in any part of this demonstration since we do not have the proper fixture to use it. Next is the work column. These coordinates pertain to the mill position. Next is the DTG column, also known as the distance to go. While a program is running, this column shows the distance remaining in any single move. To the right, we have the ref buttons for all axes of this machine. When pressed, the machine will go to their respective reference switch locations. The right section of the screen is known as the manual control group. In this section, the operator can perform tasks related to the manual control of the mill. Jogging the machine moves the mill in either the X, Y, or Z axis, depending on the axis you wish to move. There are two modes of jogging, continuous and step. In step mode, the mill jogs in steps depending on the step count selected. The options range from one-tenth of a thou to a hundred thou of an inch. To jog in step mode, you will spin the dial that's in the center in either the positive or negative direction. In continuous mode, the mill jogs at a continuous velocity. To jog in continuous mode, spin the outside dial, and this will move the mill until you release the dial. I will not go over these features in this window, since they are not relevant to operating this machine. If you wish to adjust the spindle speed or the feed rate, you can do so in your program. Lastly, on the bottom we have a tool setting. In your program, tools are referred to as T followed by a number. The tool number in your program must be the same as the tool number inputted into the machine. The next tab we will cover is the file tab. To the left, we have the hard drive window, which consists of the files that are saved on the controller. In the center, there are buttons that allow you to copy the file from the USB to the controller and vice versa. The right portion of the screen allows the operator to see a preview and edit the G-code that is loaded onto the controller. The next tab we will cover is the settings tab. In this tab, we have a window that displays a list of available G-code modalities that the mill can read. To the right, we have standard settings that you will not have to worry about. The only thing you may need to be aware of is the limit switches options. There are limit switches within the mill to reframe it from going past the standard boundaries. At times, when the operator is jogging the machine, they can go past these boundaries, causing the machine to throw an error. This usually happens when the operator raises the spindle in the Z-axis to where it hits the max Z boundary. 
To override this error, you will need to uncheck the limit switches box and manually jog the axes so it is within the standard boundaries. Once you manually move the mill, you can recheck the box so that the option is activated again. You will then need to restart the booting process to rehome the machine. The next tab we will cover is the offsets tab. In this tab, we will be able to input information regarding tool and work offsets. Before I show you the options available within this window, let's go over what tool and work offsets mean. Tool offsets are the dimensions regarding a tool. These offsets are important since the diameter and length of a tool is calculated within the controller to find the correct position for cutting a workpiece. Work offsets measures the position the workpiece is in relation to the machine. These measurements are set when the operator zeroes out the X, Y, and Z axes to the origin of the workpiece. In the tool subtab, we see the standard list of tools with the number, description, diameter, and length listed. When setting up to run a program, you want to make sure that the data input is correct and accurate. The main thing you will have to change in this tab is the tool length. In the work subtab, we see a grid that consists of G codes on the left and X, Y, Z, and A columns. Our Tormox read the work coordinate system, G54. Therefore, the highlighted line is our only concern. These values are set when we zero out the machine in the X, Y, and Z axes. The last tab we will cover over this video is the status tab. In this tab, we can see any errors or alarms the mill can give off. Usually when there is an error, a small description will appear in this window. You can clear out the message using this button. Now that we went over some of the controls we may use, let's cover the startup procedure to run a program. This is composed of the work offsets, tool offsets, and loading your program onto the controller. First, let's start off with work offsets. First, you want to take your stock and clamp it into the vise. Remember that the Tormach is only able to cut plastic and wood. To clamp the stock, insert it within the vise and use the vise handle to rotate it clockwise and tighten. How tight depends on the strength of your material. Depending on your stock and your design, you may want to use parallels to prop up your workpiece. Make sure the vise and parallels are clean and then place the parallels against the vise jaws. Then put your workpiece on top. When using parallels, it is ideal to get a rubber mallet and hit the center of the top of your stock while tightening the bolt. This is to ensure your parallels are snug and secured. Next, we will set up the work offsets for your workpiece. To do so, we must tell the mill where our origin is on our part. This involves zeroing out the X, Y, and Z axes. For this demonstration, my origin is set at the bottom left corner of my stock. First, we want to zero out our Z axis. Take a sheet of paper and place it in between the spindle and the top of the stock. Lower the spindle so that it is almost in contact with the top of your stock. As you lower the spindle, you want to move the paper back and forth until you feel the resistance on the paper. Use the step mode to lower the spindle and make sure it points out to be one thou of an inch increments to prevent it from crashing into your stock. When you find the sweet spot, ensure the tool number is set to zero and click M6G43. Now click on the zero Z button on the controller. You can now raise the spindle back up. Remember going back up on the Z axis is the same as going in the positive direction. Now we will want to insert a tool so we can zero out the X and Y axes. To insert a tool into the mill, open the spindle door using the latch on the right. Inside, you will see a bolt with the stopper. These will be used to tighten the collet and tool in place. Next, take the collet on the left and insert it into the spindle as so. Tighten the bolt while holding the collet in place until the threads catch on. Next, take your tool and insert it into the spindle. The tool must be firmly pressed upward while tightening to ensure accuracy. Tighten the bolt completely and use the stopper to secure the tool. Take the torque wrench located on the front of the machine and set the switch so that it's pointing to the right. This tool is calibrated to apply a certain amount of torque to the fastener without over or under tightening. 
You want to turn the wrench until you hear the pop that indicates it is fully tightened. Release the stopper from the bolt and close the spindle door before proceeding. If you forget to close the spindle door and you move the mill in the negative Z direction, the spindle door will pop off. This can be easily fixed by raising the spindle back up and repositioning the door into the slots on the side. Now jog the mill to the origin of your stock using the jog shuttle. Once you are happy with the position of your tool, zero out the X and Y axes by clicking the zero buttons. The mill is now zeroed out and ready for the next steps. Let's go over how to measure your tools. To measure tool length, you will take the granite surface plate and the height gauge from the cabinet. First, you want to place the height gauge on the block and turn it on. Lower the tip so that it is in contact with the block and press on the zero button. This will zero out the height gauge so that it will measure from the top of the block. The Tormach tool settings are in inches, so make sure you are measuring in the correct units. You will then mount the holder of the tool into the slot and lift the end of the height gauge to the top of the tool bit as so. Make sure you are placing the height gauge completely on the tool and not on the edge of the tool. These practices are to ensure that you get accurate measurements of the tool length. You will then take this measurement and input it under the tool length setting in the offsets tab. You must measure every tool you plan on using and update the tool offsets for each tool. To run a program, we need to have a G-code ready. G-code is a language used to tell a machine what to do and how to do something. G-code consists of coordinates in the X, Y, Z directions as well as some commands that are written with a G or M followed by a number. Knowing how to read G-code can be beneficial when trying to diagnose a problem and can avoid a potential collision. Here are some G and M codes that you should know in order to understand what the machine will be doing. I will not go over these different codes. However, it is recommended that you take the time to understand the different commands. In order to create this G-code, you will need to use a CAM program that will generate it. The one we use here is Mastercam. While we use Mastercam, we also support HSM Works, Inventor HSM, and Fusion 360. First, make sure you open Mastercam on one of the computers we have in the RPM room. Next, ensure you have the machine selected as Tormach PCNC 440. Then select all operations you wish to create the file for and click the G-code button here. Verify that Tormach is listed as a processor and click OK. Save the file to the USB you are given. Code Expert will open a window of the G-code created. You can close this window and proceed back to the Tormach. To upload your program onto the controller, you will first insert the USB into the computer, then navigate to the File tab. You should be able to find your file. Select your file and click on the Copy from USB button to upload it onto the controller. Highlight your file, then click Load G-Code at the top. Now your program should show up in the main tab. As we mentioned before, Cycle Start will begin running your program. Before we click on the Cycle Start button, I will decrease the velocity to a low percentage first to see how the machine will behave. In the beginning of each segment of the code, the machine will ask the operator to insert the correct tool. This is when you can verify that your tool number on your program matches with the tool number in the machine. I will then click Cycle Start to proceed. Once the end of the tool is near the surface of the workpiece, I like to click on Feed Hold. To verify the distance to go in the X, Y, and Z directions are correct and correspond to their relationship to the stock. In this case, everything looks good, and we can now proceed to run the program. Once the mill looks like it is cutting well, I will increase the velocity back up to 100%. I encourage you to use this technique, since when the mill runs at 100% velocity, a possible crash will be difficult to catch in time. While your program is running, you can adjust the feed rate, RPM, and max velocity. Be careful when adjusting these settings, since it could potentially damage your workpiece or tool. 
While the program is running, I will activate the coolant to reduce the heat buildup on the tool and workpiece. CNC mills will not stop if a crash occurs. Therefore, you should always be attentive when operating the Tormach. Remember, if something sounds off, click on the feed hold so you can adjust the problem. When your program detects a tool change, the spindle will come to a stop and the controller will request for a tool change. After changing out the tool, click Cycle Start to resume the program. To shut down the machine, first remove the tool and unclamp your part from the mill. Find a vacuum in the industrial makerspace and vacuum up all the chips. Clean up your area and ensure all the tools and instruments are returned to its designated spot. Once your area is clean, you can then push the e-stop and turn off the main power switch. Turn off the controller by pressing and holding the power button on the computer. Lock the machine and return the key and USB back to the tool room. And that concludes the Tormach PCNC 440 training video. Don't forget to check out the Canvas page to sign up for an IPT with an MST. Thanks for watching.